Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today for Take Back Control of Invoice Processing. My name is Mia and I am from Nightingale HQ. We help businesses to adopt AI. This is the last in our series of webinars about our Go Smarter tool set. Uh, Go Smarter launched this week. If you head over to gosmarter.ai, you can get set up with our social listening tool right away. So I'm a data science, science apprentice here at Nightingale HQ, and I helped to build the Go Smarter tools. One of those tools due to launch in the next few weeks is our invoice processing tool. I'm going to talk you through how automation and AI can be used to take back control of invoice processing. Uh, so I'll explain what automation and AI actually means. I'll explain why we need to take back control of our invoice processing. And I'll explain uh, some of the different tools available to help you with your invoice processing tasks. So automation is probably a term that you've he heard many times before in the business world. Sometimes it's associated with the idea of robot scanning for our, our jobs. Now, this, of course, is not the case. Automation works best when it is designed to work alongside people. Automation at its best takes repetitive data type day tasks away from people who find them boring, frankly, and monotonous, leaving those people, those humans, to focus on what humans do best. Uh, dealing with the kind of fuzzy logic, the decision making and all the things that really do require a human brain to do. Automation in this sense saves us loads of time and it saves us money, leaving us to do important things that we need to grow our businesses. At its simplest, automation is using a system to perform a specific task. It can be a really specific task and it can be triggered by a range of different things. For example, if you want your lights to go on and off at certain times of day, but you don't want to invest in smart bulbs, you can buy a ticker timer to plug your lights into. The ticker timer is the trigger for your action. The trigger at this point is whatever time you have set. And the action in this example is your lights switching on and off. But the trigger and the action can be different. The trigger doesn't have to be time. It can be something that is manually triggered. For example, the Amazon Dash buttons, which used to be physical buttons, now exist on an app, uh, are the triggers for a more complex action, uh, asking Amazon to set up an order for whichever item you have um, attached the button to. So you can define automation for any number of different business processes. And the only limitation for what you can automate in your business is what you can define as a simple set of steps. Automation is very much garbage in, garbage out. If you don't define the steps very well, if you don't choose the right trigger, the automation is not gonna work very well. But as long as you have a business process that you can break down into steps that can be performed by a computer, you can automate that process. And it does not have to be do this, then do that. Your automation can be if this, then that. What I mean is automation supports what we call branching logic. Uh, the set of steps can reach a fork in the road uh, and they can diverge one way or another. As an example, since we are talking about invoice processing with Power Automate, which I'll introduce later in the talk, uh, you can listen out for any email coming from your suppliers that contains an invoice. Your if this then that, in this case, is looking at who the supplier is. So you can check the domain of the email that was sent to you. And then you can divert those invoices to different folders in your OneDrive, for example. And most importantly, automation can include human and AI steps. Not every step in your chain needs to be performed by that simple automation process. Many automation processes include approval steps. So if you have an automation set up, for example, using our social listening tool uh, to retweet very positive tweets about your brand, you can add a step very easily that says, I'm just going to email this to a person to make sure that they're happy for this tweet to be retweeted. Because humans are much better at computers at those very fuzzy areas, that is this the right decision to make, especially when it comes to things like social media and understanding uh, the context behind text. But 
for a lot of those tasks, we don't even need a human to do that step. We can free that human up for something even more complicated. We can involve AI. AI or, or uh, artificial intelligence is a more complicated system than an automation system. AI is software that performs cognitive tasks. Cognitive very much means what it sounds like. They're tasks kind of like the tasks that our brains perform, and they fall into three broad categories. Reasoning is taking in a bunch of data, often imperfect because data almost always is, and forming some kind of conclusion. It's looking through um, a bunch of invoices from the past and saying, we're probably going to need to pay that supplier about £150 this month. There's also understanding. This is something that humans are very, very good at, using all of our different senses to understand the world around us. Now, AI can do things like looking at an image and recognizing the, um, it, the objects in it. It can do things like taking a picture of, uh, say, a PDF, a photograph of an invoice and saying, I can see what the, the total amount in that invoice is. So kind of reading. Um, and finally, AI can also understand the voice. Uh, anyone who has an Alexa at home uh, knows what that means. And the third kind of broad category of AI's cognitive tasks is interacting. If you watched our webinar about FAQ chatbots, you will know that uh, AI can engage with people in natural ways, whether that be through speech, when you speak to Alexa, or through text if you chat uh, to an FAQ chatbot on uh, a company website. So there are many different areas of AI that all feed into these three broad tasks. The main one that is relevant to our invoice processing is computer vision. Computer vision is taking an image, uh, which is simply just a set of pixels on a screen, and converting that image into computer readable information. So instead of a picture of an invoice, you have rows of text and uh, numbers that can be interpreted by, by software such as accounting software. So we are going to talk about how you can use automation for performing the simple set of steps and AI, computer vision, to take back control of your invoice processing. Now, by saying we need to take back control, I am implying that we've lost control in the first place. Let's take a look at the state of invoice processing for small businesses as it stands today. Now, research by SAGE estimated that SMEs lose 150 days every year to administration, and more than 10% of that time is spent on invoice processing. If you're a very small SME, you may not have that many people available to do tasks for you. So that half a person essentially is a very, very valuable time that you could be spending with something else. And all of that time adds up. Uh, it's estimated that manually processing an invoice costs between £4 and £25. There's a big variance between those two numbers, and that's because every invoice is different. Some are digital, some are paper. Some of them are written in a really clear, repeatable format. Some of them are harder to read. Some of them have mistakes in, which we will come to in a moment. Now, there's two key things with invoices that um, we can get automation and AI to help with a lot. One is making sure that invoices don't get lost. If you are automatically saving your invoices, then for every one you don't lose, you save between $125 and $225. That's how much it's estimated it costs to recover or replace an invoice that you've lost. Automation can really save you cash um, when it stops things from slipping through the cracks. And finally, more than 3% of our invoices contain errors because uh, when people do these repetitive tasks day in, day out that don't require a lot of thought, there is um, there is a high risk of, of boredom, um, which can lead to mistakes and also just tiredness. Doing the same task all day long can, can really tire you out and that's going to make you more error prone. The good news is that AI does not get tired. Uh, which is great news because each paper invoice error costs on average £40 to rectify. So this is the state of invoice processing when it's done manually by small businesses. All of that time and all of that money really adds up. 
And when you have um, a small business with only a small number of people in, you want as much time as possible to be spent on growing your business. And even if you're a bigger company that has a finance department, you want your finance department to less, spend less time processing your um, invoice data and more time dealing with your suppliers to build up good relations with them to negotiate discounts, that kind of thing. People can be doing much more valuable tasks than invoice processing. So how can we use automation and AI to take back control? There are three key steps where they can really save that time and money. Automation can be used to detect invoices that are coming into your email inbox and save them directly instead of waiting for you to go looking for them. AI, using a process called OCR that I will deal with in the next slide, can be used to convert that image, uh, your invoice, into computer readable text. And then automation at the final step can take that computer, computer readable text, the numbers, um, the amounts of money, the supplier names, and store them in a centralized repository. That means that your invoice is not going to get lost and it will be really, really quick to update your accounting. So two very um, important automation steps and in the middle, sandwiched between them, an AI step. OCR stands for optical character recognition, and this is something you have almost certainly come across many times before. It is an AI system that can convert handwritten or typed text to machine readable text. Um, you've probably come across ANPR, automatic number plate recognition. That's where a car park knows how long you've been there just because it read your license plate on the way in. Uh, that uses OCR as does assistive technology for blind and visually impaired users, uh, as does a huge number of administrative tasks like converting scanners documents to searchable PDFs and data entry, such as invoice processing. Now, these three steps together can make up a decent uh, invoice processing solution. But of course, uh, those, that's three very broad steps and each solution will tackle each one slightly differently. There are three main solutions available to small businesses that um, integrate with bookkeeping and accounting solutions. These are HubDoc, Receipt Bank and Auto Entry. I've put up a, a very, very brief summary of them on this slide. The next couple of slides have more information about them, but I will skip over them so they will be available on the blog post later on. The main the, the similarities between HubDoc, Receipt Bank and Auto Entry is that they all allow you to upload your invoices from a phone app or a web app. Um, they also allow you to forward uh, your invoices direct to a specific email address. And they all have some kind of OCR invoice processing tool, the AI system that converts the image of the uh, PDF to a table of machine readable values. They all integrate with Zero QuickBooks and Bill.com and they allow your bookkeeper or accountant access to the account, which is great for small businesses that need a nudge from their bookkeeper uh, to fill in the, the gaps. It's that idea of always having a human step in your automation process. The key differences lie in uh, their integrations and in their price. So HubDoc and Receipt Bank both have capability to automatically import your invoices from common uh, accounts. So that's things like MailChimp, Zapier, the Royal Mail, um, Vonage, a lot of utility companies have API feeds that connect directly to HubDoc and Receipt Bank. So you don't even have to think about your invoices from those suppliers anymore. And Receipt Bank and Auto Entry also integrate with a lot more accounting software. Which leads us to the price. HubDoc is owned by Xero and is available for free to all uh, Xero users. So if your company uses Xero for your bookkeeping and accounting and you're not using HubDoc, you are essentially paying for it without using it. Um, if you are not a Xero user, it is $20 per month to use HubDoc and it will integrate with QuickBooks and Bill.com. That $20 a month gets you unlimited users, whereas Receipt Bank, uh, which costs £10 a month, gives you one user and 50 invoices per month. If you need more users, if you need more invoices, the price starts to build up. Auto entry works slightly differently in that instead of a, a fixed monthly fee, it charges you as a, on a pay-as-you-go system. You buy credits that are used to uh, it, it process your invoices. And it comes out at about 15p per invoice at its cheapest. 
So by looking at this comparison, you can see that there's an awful lot of features available with this built in OCR invoice processing. Um, as long as you're prepared to shell out about £10 or more per month. But if your invoices exceed 50 a month, uh, if you want a lot of users on there, then that price can really start to build up. Here is a little bit more information about all of them. So what about the GoSmarter invoice processing tool? Well, this tool is designed not to have so much of a cost buildup as your invoices increase. And it's designed to have a lot more focus on that automation step at the very beginning, the listening out for invoices. If your suppliers are not on the list of um, approved invoices that you get with things like HubDoc. With the GoSmarter invoicing, invoice processing tool, it's built on top of Power Automate, which costs about £11.30 per user per month, but is usable way beyond the invoice processing tool. It's used in our um, RPA tool, which a previous webinar covered. Um, and it's built on Microsoft security. So for that price, your data is kept extremely secure. On top of that Power Automate solution is a Microsoft Azure solu solution. Uh, it's a cognitive service called Form Recognizer. Form Recognizer with the OCR labeling tool allows you to train your own machine learning models to recognize your own invoice layouts. There's no code required. Uh, it's simply a click and drop labeling uh, system and you only need about five invoices from each supplier. Once you've uh, set that up, you won't need to think about that supplier ever again because the Power Automate solution listens out to emails from that supplier, uh, extracts all of the text from them and saves them to the common data service. So there's a bit more setup required uh, with this tool. But once you've got set up with it, it costs less than a penny per invoice for the first 500 every month. And if that's not enough for you, it's still capped at 5p per invoice when you go over 500 a month. The reason that uh, the form recognizer asks you to train your own models is because it, it maximizes the accuracy when the model is based entirely on the layouts that you receive rather than on a lot of layouts that you never actually see in your business. The Power Automate solution can be extended to connect to Office 365 and Dynamics 365 relatively easily. Um, and that Power Automate license opens the door to a lot more automation. It scales with your business uh, at a very, very small rate of less than 5p per invoice for the first 500. Sorry, less than 1p. And what doors does that Power Automate solution open? Well, if, you ha if you're set up with Power Automate for that very low price, you can introduce a bunch of approval processes. It's very easy with just a few clicks to set up approval processes for emails, tweets, anything that you might want approval for. To automate your social media, if you post to Instagram, you can also ask for it to post to Pinterest as well or to Twitter or something like that. You can customize your own push notifications. You can say, I want my phone to buzz if I get an email from my boss, or I want my phone to buzz if somebody fills in my form that I set up. You can use it to sync files between different um, providers, whether that's Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, all sorts of different things like that. You can use it for scheduling and reminders because it is Power Automate, Sim a very, very simple to use, no code automation solution. As I was saying at the start, any business process that you can break down into triggers and actions, you can probably put onto Power Automate. And finally, it's useful for data collection. If you use a lot of surveys and forms, you can ask Power Automate to, to forward those answers to whatever uh, system you're using, such as Power BI, or you can ask it to, to email you so that you're always aware when somebody has given you a response. So with those two solutions together, the, the Azure very, uh, very, very low cost OCR labeling tool and um, form recognizer on top of Power Automate, you can get your own DIY invoice processing tool to start to take back control in a really customized manner, listening out for invoices rather than actually uploading them yourself. So what's next? Well, GoSmarter has already begun to launch. Our social listening tool is already available. If you go to GoSmarter AI, uh, you can sign up or book an onboarding call, call uh, to get started with social listening. As I said, this is the last in a series of webinars. If you go to our blog at blog.nightingalehq.ai, you can view all of the previous webinars um, and read more about these different technologies. 
But for now, I'd like to say thank you very much for listening and enjoy taking back control of your invoice processing. Thank you.